الله عليه وسلم وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم تسليما كثيرا. So I want to welcome everyone back. Alhamdulillah, we're on just three now, and we have two Sheikh Abdullahs for you tonight. Dr. Abdullah Al-Auda and Sheikh Abdullah Al-Auda, Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen. And I'm going to start off with uh, summarizing and, of course, just reminding everyone, please keep tuning in, inshallah ta'ala, to all the wonderful content that's being put out. I hope you've been following the Angel series as well as the series from D to Habits every day at 11 a.m. Eastern as well as noon Eastern from D to Habits. And then, of course, this is our nightly get-together, inshallah ta'ala, where we summarize and reflect on one juz of the Qur'an. Uh, SubhanAllah, as I was revisiting the smooth transition, the beautiful structure of Al-Fatiha to Al-Baqarah. Uh, last night we talked about how it's it's absolutely beautiful that the, the way the Qur'an starts is a dua for guidance, which is Al-Fatiha. Al-Baqarah ends with a dua for firmness on that guidance. So you ask, اِهْدِنَا الصِّرَاطُ الْمُسْتَقِيمُ سِرَاطَ الَّذِينَ نَعْمِتَ عَلَيْهِمْ غَيْرِ الْمَغْضُوبِ عَلَيْهِمْ وَالْضَالِينَ Asking Allah to guide you to the straight path and then رَبَّنَا لَا تُؤَخِذْنَا إِنْ نَسِينَا أَوْ أَخْطَأْنَا until the end of the uh, until the end of the du'a at Al-Baqarah, where you're asking Allah Subhanahu wa Taala for firmness with that guidance. Now, if you remember, the way that Allah answers the request for guidance in Surah Al-Fatiha right away is ذَلِكَ الْكِتَابُ لَا رَيْبَ فِيهِ هُدًى لِلْمُتَّقِينَ that this is the book in which there is no doubt. It is a guidance for those who are righteous, mindful of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, and pious. Um, and if you listen to the first ayah of Ali Imran, how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala introduces this, it connects right up, it connects right to the dua that ends with the Baqarah, where we elaborate on our affirmation of willingness to accept guidance and to accept all that comes with guidance. And Ali Imran is a surah in which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala addresses the people of the book more than any other surah in the Qur'an. Ya Ahl al-Kitab, O people of the book. It, it constantly shows up, right? And in the end of Al-Baqarah, what do we affirm at the end of Surah Al-Baqarah? Amana billahi wa malaikatihi wa kutubihi wa rusuli. Right? We believe in Allah. We believe in the angels. We believe in all of the books. We believe in all of the messengers. We believe in the entire package, everything that Allah has sent of guidance from Adam alayhi salam all the way to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam. And look how beautiful Ali Imran starts. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, نَزَّلَ عَلَيْكَ الْكِتَابَ بِالْحَقِّ مُصَدِّقًا لِمَا بَيْنَ يَدَيْهِ وَأَنزَلَ التَّوْرَاتَ وَالْإِنْجِيلِ مِنْ قَبْلُ هُدًا لِلنَّاسِ وَأَنزَلَ الْفُرْقَانِ So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, He is the one who sat down to you this book in truth and to confirm all that which came before it. And He is the one who revealed the Torah and the Gospels and the Injil. مِنْ قَبْلُ هُدًا للناس, And those were the guidances or the forms of divine guidance for their people at their time. Just like ذَلِكَ الْكِتَابُ لَا رَيْبَ فِيهِ That this Qur'an now is the book of Hidayah that we, are, uh, that we take as a criteria. So Allah affirms that divine guidance came down through a Torah and an Injil, which we affirmed our belief in, in the end of Surah Al-Baqarah. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, but this is Al-Furqan. This is now the criteria which is the Qur'an, the last of the revelation, as the revelations come and they confirm that which came before them, and then they extend the new legislation and the laws of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah addresses the same three groups of people as he does in Surah Al-Baqarah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala addresses the hypocrites first, okay? Those who will miss guidance, not because of Allah revealing a deficiency within that guidance or not making things clear, but because of a deviation in their hearts. So it starts off with the hypocrites. That those who have crookedness in their heart will, will look for the ambiguous, the abstract, things that they can twist in the Quran so that they can twist it towards their, their hypocritical uh, aims and, and desires not to actually follow rightful guidance, but to use guidance as a tool to attain more of this world, which, which they have a problem with because uh, their desires are unrestricted. And so they continue to try to uh, craft all of this message to fit their desires. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala addresses the believers. Okay, so those who are, who, who are amongst the, the most knowledgeable of the believers, those who are pursuing Allah's guidance, those who are seeking to be on the right path, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala addresses the disbelievers as well. But pay attention to the du'a of the believers now, okay? So subhanAllah, like I said, al-Baqarah, 
uh, is a springboard of how we make dua in every way. Dua after tawbah or dua in the context of repentance with Adam alayhi salam, dua in the context of obedience in Ibrahim alayhi salam. What does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us here? رَبَّنَا لَا تُزِغْ قُلُوبَنَا بَعْدَ إِذْ هَدَيْتَنَا وَهَبْ لَنَا مِنْ لَدُنْكَ الرَّحْمَ إِنَّكَ أَنْتَ الْوَحَابِ Oh Allah, do not let our hearts deviate after you have given us rightful guidance. SubhanAllah, the, the theme is always hidayah in these first two, uh, in these first two surahs. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, grant it to us. Allahumma ameen. وَهَبْ لَنَا مِنْ لَدُنْكَ الرَّحْمَ And we're going to need your mercy because when we slip like Adam alayhi salam, in our ways, we're going to need your mercy for forgiveness. And when we do our good deeds and when we do acts of obedience, like our father Ibrahim alayhi salam, we're going to have deficiencies. So we're going to need your mercy. And as much as we try to stick to the path of divine guidance, surely sometimes we're going to fall short. Innaka anta wahhab, and you are the bestower of all gifts. Uh, gifts. Rabbana innaka jami'un nasi yawmin la rayba fi. Look at the similarities of words. Oh Allah, you are going to gather us on a day in which there is no doubt. In Allah, la yukhlifu al-mi'ad. Verily, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not betray his promise. Uh, subhanAllah, uh, ذلك الكتاب لا ريب فيه. And here, uh, the day in which there is no doubt, the book in which there is no doubt. They are perfectly lined up uh, with one another. Now after that, inshallah ta'ala, I'll conclude with this. Um, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, uh, clarifies that we are an ummah that is to uh, affirm all of the rightful guidance that's been sent and to now take the criteria of the Quran and the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, what does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala say? Inna deena indallah al-Islam. Right? That the religion of Allah is al-Islam. That the, the religion of Ibrahim alayhi salam as he was a Muslim, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala calls us once again to call the people of the book and to uh, call upon humanity to affirm all of Allah's prophets, including Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and Isa alayhi salam, to affirm all of the books that they were all divinely revealed. Of course, uh, uh, you know, before uh, things changed within those books and now to affirm the last revelation, the one who sent the Torah and the Injil has sent the Quran to affirm the last revelation of the Quran. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, even uh, as he uh, gives us the words of the prophets that are calling their people to affirm rightful guidance. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us, tells us to call the people of the book to a common word that we will only worship uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and not associate anyone besides God and uh, that, that, we will, that we will affirm all that he has taught us to affirm in these moments. And again, uh, Allah Azzawajal affirming in a beautiful way, the religion of Maryam, the religion of Isa, the religion of Ibrahim, the religion of Zakaria, the way of all of the prophets of Allah, turning towards him in pure monotheism, abiding by the, the divine revelation as he sent it at that time and doing the absolute best that they can. And here's how I'll give this off to Sheikh Abdullah Uduru. Uh, SubhanAllah, the very last ayah, the very last ayah of this juz, is that you will not achieve righteousness, i.e. the reward of righteousness, until you spend out of that which you love. SubhanAllah, so it's like taking it to the next level. Some people are misguided because of the allure of this world. Some people use this world to further them upon guidance and to draw closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as the very beautiful story of Abu Talha, uh, ta'ala anhu companion of the Prophet Sallallahu who heard this verse and gave away his most beautiful property, the gardens in front of al Masjid al-Nabawi because he wanted to spend out of that which he loves. So some people deviate because their hearts uh, are driven too much towards this world and their desires are unrestricted. Some people are so in tune with guidance that they take everything that Allah gives them and they appreciate the beauty of this world. And then they use that to gain the ultimate pleasure and the beauty of the hereafter and Allah's pleasure. So with that, inshallah ta'ala, Shaykh Abdullah Aduru, take us away. Bismillah. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen, wa sallallahu wa sallam, wa barak ala nabiyyina Muhammadin wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in. Mashallah, you got to pass the baton. Mashallah, that was a nice... Alhamdulillah. What I want to talk about is a beautiful concept that, subhanAllah, the COVID-19 virus kind of 
activated this aspect of my connection to Allah and my belief. As you know, the word aqidah, aqidah comes from uqtatul qalb. It's like a, a knot. How strong is your bond with your Lord? That's where the word comes from. So it's that knot and bond that you have with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And it's manifested in different ways, different ways of worship. But what's so beautiful is this COVID virus, right? We know that it's a virus that has been brought by Allah. It's been predestined by Allah. But subhanAllah, really realizing from the aspect of tawakkul, of trust in Allah, from the aspect of, okay, Allah has brought it forth to me, but it is just a means to show something to his creation, which leads me to the point that everything that Allah has created on this earth is only a vessel. It is only a means of a manifestation of his name or attribute. And it's upon us to act in accordance to what we see from that created thing, which is a manifestation of his name or attributes. For example, money, children. Um, Sheikh Abdullah, I don't know if they can hear you. I uh, just want to make sure, inshallah ta'ala, really quickly. Sorry, I think that there is your mic on, Sheikh? Yes, it's on. Can you hear me? Okay. Can you hear me? Yeah, I was just I was just getting a message that your mic is off, but it might be might be someone else. Bismillah. So okay. you can go ahead and follow. Okay. Uh, but it's is you know many things that we see on this earth that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created, we have to realize that Allah has created it to show his signs, his names or his attributes. So for instance, a child, if we look at our children or any child, that is a form of risk. Allah has provided you a child, but how are you going to act and treat that child? The enjoyment that you have from money, it could be used for khair or it could be used for sharr. So how do we manifest our recognition of what Allah has brought on this earth? And that's what's very important in the verse that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the chapter of Al-Imran, verse number 14, when he says, أَبْتَعُوذُ بِاللَّهِ مِنَ الشَّيْطَانَ الرَّجِيمِ زُيِّنَ لِلنَّاسِ حُبُّ الشَّهَوَاتِ زُيِّنَ لِلنَّاسِ حُبُّ الشَّهَوَاتِ مِنَ النِّسَاءِ وَالْبَنِينَ وَالْقَنْطَرَةِ مِنَ وَالْقَنْطَرَةِ مِنَ لَيْلَ اللَّهِ زُيِّنَ لِلنَّاسِ حُبُّ الشَّهَوَاتِ مِنَ النِّسَاءِ وَالْبَنِينَ وَالْقَنَاطِيرِ الْمُقَنْطَرَةِ مِنَ الذَّهَبِ وَالْفِضَّةِ وَالْخَيْرِ الْمُسَوَّمَةِ وَالْأَنْعَامِ وَالْحَرْثِ ذَلِكَ مَتَاءُ الْحَيَاةِ الدُّنْيَا وَاللَّهُ عِنْدَهُ حُسْنُ الْمَآبِ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says زُيِّنَ لِلنَّاسِ This is the first portion. That Allah is talking about something that was beautified for man. Or man or a woman. زُيِّنَ لِلنَّاسِ And here he uses the passive form. And the scholars have disagreed. They had a difference of opinion on who was the muzayyin. Who was the one that beautified these things to us? And when understanding is subhanAllah, you have Taha bin Ashur, rahimahullah ta'ala, he mentions and he makes tawfiq of this, he brings it together and he says, you know, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala beautified it by creating it. But shaitan beautified it by our connection to it and how we may be mesmerized and distracted from the initial purpose of its creation. So the money that we use, our children, for instance, when we don't wake them up for prayer and they're 16, 17, 18, we say, let them, you know, I don't want to harm them. Or they, you know, my child is too young, right? Not having the middle course, being in the middle course and recognizing sometimes you may have to be firm to establish the word of Allah in your home because all of us have desires. But you as a father or mother or caretaker, it's important for you to maintain the word of Allah. And that's the kalimatul uliya. That is the most important factor that one should try their best to live by when they're raising themselves and raising the ones that they are responsible for. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions that this was beautified for mankind. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions here that the shahawat, as some scholars mention, or the, the desires that we have for a certain thing is beautified. How is that? Because there may be something that we see in origin, our children, we naturally love them. But the desire that we have for them, towards them, can go beyond the bounds of showing gratitude to God. Or because we have forgotten, forgotten the fact that God has provided for us that child, we may be negligent 
in raising them. We may raise them in a fashion that is immoral, that is not in, in, in a manifestation of gratitude towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to where we may not even tell them about the importance of the Quran. You know, the month of Ramadan is here. We don't try to encourage them to fast. Even if they've reached, you know, they reach the age of puberty, the, the age of discernment, you know, talking and talking to them about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and reminding them. You know, subhanAllah, I was on the phone, I was on a, a live earlier with the family therapist and subhanAllah, we were talking about um, how children sometimes, you know, I used to be a youth director and parents will call me and they'll say, they'll say, can you talk to my son? Can you talk to my daughter? He, he's on the balcony, he's drinking and he's, he's getting involved in so many things. Please talk to him. You know, and I'm the first one. I'll say, no, 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 no. Don't hand him the phone yet. I want to talk to you. He didn't just wake up wanting to do these things. So how are we nurturing our children to recognize that there is a God and that God has placed things on within the creation that demands from us something? And if not, we'll be, we could be mesmerized by being too negligent of our children and of our money or being too, uh, uh, being too overbearing. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Minan nisa wal banin. As we know, obviously, with, with women, you know, the, the, the desire that men have is something that is natural and vice versa. But Allah has given this, this, this sharia. As we know, the sharia is what is termed as the mode of the mat. It is the, 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 mar the markaz or the center of flowing channels of water. So the sharia serves as a replenishment for the soul if one takes the means to replenish it by practicing the religion. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions the type of the type of money. And here he mentions it in different cases. And huge piles and heaps of gold and silver. And then he mentions the branded horses and the cattle. And then agriculture. So all of these are forms of barter, if you will, ways that we can trade and make money and you know take care of what we need to take care of. But that in, in and of itself, that which you use to get something else that you want is a blessing from Allah. But if you use it in a fashion in which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not pleased with, such as getting involved in interest, and then you say, you know, there's no way that I cannot get involved in interest. It's impossible. As we talked about yesterday, that Allah will not put in front of you, uh, uh, put a burden on you more than you can bear. Trying your best to find the means to where whatever is beautiful in front of you, what you want to indulge upon, you should stop and ask yourself, is this within the confines of the Sharia? So the second thing is how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions all these variations of money, which in essence is halal, but how we use it, how we recognize what Allah has given us could be haram. And that's a beautiful factor because a lot of times it's your perception of the thing and how you act in response to what you see from that thing, how you interact with it. And the third thing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, that verily, this is the pleasure of the president's world's life and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the excellent return or he, the return to him is the excellent return. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala puts it all in perspective. And I love, you know, one of the amazing things that I love that I came into Islam for was just hearing the concept of the dunya you know, that this world will end. And with that reality in mind and in heart, don't do things to impress people that they have no control, ultimate power over you or authority over you. You should try your best to do things that please your creator. Because this dunya is as the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi said, said what, is, what is with me for the dunya? The dunya is like the shade of a tree. He sits under it, takes the shade, then he gets up and leaves. You know, Umar ibn Khattab, عنه, he was with some of his companions and he passed by a trash can. And he pointed at the trash can and the Sahaba can, you can get to adhona min. It's the, it's the Sahaba, they were, they, it was a, a reeking smell. He pointed at the trash can and he said, Hadhi dunya kumulati tahrisuna alayha. He said, This is your dunya for that which you cherish. So the beauty of this verse is firstly, that things will be beautified as a test for you. How do you act in accordance to that? Is it in a manner of gratitude or is it in a manner of selfless, self being selfish and disregarding what Allah has given you that for and realizing that it's from all aspects of life, from what is in the earth and what is on the earth from agriculture 
and uh, also from gold and silver and money, etc. And then lastly, all of these things are going to end. So we have to put it in proper perspective. And remember that we will return to Allah and we will be asked for everything that we indulged upon of what was mentioned earlier in the verse. So may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us of those that spend this time recognizing his blessings and act in accordance to replenishment of the soul, the sharia. Allah, you better I'm so subhanAllah, you, you talked about uh, this concept of wallahu indahu husn al ma'ab that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has something better for us that we should long for what he has. And you talked about it in terms of not getting caught up in the uh, try, in the pursuit of this world. And inshallah ta'ala, uh, next we have our special guest for the night, Dr. Abdul al uh joining us for the first time, inshallah. And he's going to talk about the other element of that, inshallah ta'ala, another verse towards the end of Surah Al-Baqarah, inshallah ta'ala. As well, Father Dr. Abdullah, welcome. Welcome Thank to Sheikh Omar. Shukran, Sheikh Abdullah. Uh, if I pick up from uh, what uh, Sheikh Abdullah talked about when he uh, mentioned how uh, this dunya and the, some elements of this dunya being uh, purified uh, on one part by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the other part by the shaitan. That's a very good, uh, and I like how this, uh, how Tahir bin Ashur developed that and you know, showed how this same thing being uh, can be used for good and can be used for bad. Can the intention itself can be good and can be bad? And uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna talk about uh, one verse of, of Surah Al-Baqarah when Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala talks about charity, and throughout the the uh, thro- throughout Quran, uh, charity is mentioned a lot. Mentioned a lot, uh, and 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 we are uh, in the month of Ramadan, the month of charity. Uh, the the idea of charity, the concept of charity in Islam, is very interesting and and v- very unique in a way uh, that uh, we we have seen in in many talks and many books and many uh, 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 lectures how. Uh, the idea of charity is being reduced to one just simple form or one uh, straightforward form, which is the form of uh, financial charity, meaning giving money. Uh, but in the uh, Islam uh, broadens the concept of charity, like when uh, the Prophet sallallahu says, تَبَسُّمُكَ فِي وَجْهِ أَخِيكَ الصَّدَقَةِ يَمَاطَةُ الْأَدَى عَنِ الطَّرِيقِ الصَّدَقَةِ uh, and, and, uh, uh, and, and so uh, the Prophet وسلم, tells us that uh, uh, guiding the blind is a form of charity. Uh, uh, smiling in your brother's or sister's face is a charity. Uh, pouring what remains uh, from your cup to your brother's or sister's cup is a form of charity in another uh, narration by the Prophet Sallallahu mm-hmm. So these are the charities. It, it's, it's a way of trying to remind the Muslim, remind the adult, the individual, that charity is in the heart and can guide your manner, can guide your thoughts, can guide your exercise, and therefore you can give now with the uh, with the purified heart with the heart that is uh, purified by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that has no harm or insult or intention to uh, to remind the given person uh, any way uh, of your generosity for example so that's why in these verses that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about the al infaq fi sabillah in the surah al baqarah Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, uh, uh, amalu, uh, before that, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, um, and those who do not follow what they give or uh, the charity that they give, uh, an insult, a harm, or a reproach. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reminds us that uh, if you try to remind the person that you give uh, how generous you are, or try to insult, or try to make him to return the favor, then it's 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 a worldly matter. It becomes a worldly matter, and that's why the jurists and scholars always remind us that the intentions can transform 
a, a worldly matter into a worship and can transform uh, worship into a worldly matter. If you intend a, a very uh, great uh, ritual like sadaqa and, and, and charity and intend to uh, just favor somebody in order for, for him or her to return the favor, then it's a worldly matter that you wait for that person to return favor. Now it's a worldly matter. Uh, if you give somebody because you think you are better and you are you have you have wealth and because you are in a better position uh, uh, religiously, then this uh, uh, exactly nullifies the whole idea of of sadaqah. And that's why in the in the next verse, Allah subhanahu in the following verse, Allah subhanahu wa taala says. Uh, oh, you who you believe, do not nullify your charity with reproach or harm or insult. So when you when you give, you intend to give to uh, first purify your heart yourself. This is a way of uplifting yourself. Do not think when you give somebody you are uplifting him or her. You are first need to uplift yourself. You, are, you, you need to think of yourself as somebody who needs to give this, not somebody, not, uh, you, you do not think of the other person or the other uh, party uh, uh, that they need to be given. It's of course they, in the, in, in the financial uh, 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 calculation need to be given because they may be needy, they may be relative, they may be uh, in bad shape, but you are the person who should benefit. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will never benefit. The other party can benefit, but it's not, it, it, it meant to benefit you, to purify your heart, to uplift you, to, uh, that's, that's the idea of ritual and that's the secret. And that's why Al-Ghazali, in his great book, Hiyal uh, al wrote a whole volume of the secrets of rituals to, and he says uh, a lot of scholars and even scholars and jurists sometimes overlook the secrets of ritual and they sometimes uh, being exhausted and consumed by uh, the details of how they should uh, correct uh, physically the rituals, but they sometimes overlook the uh, spiritual um, uh, dimension of the whole uh, ritual. And subhanAllah, if you were to connect, um, it's actually very powerful. While you were speaking, I was thinking Abu Talha al-Ansari, radiallahu ta'ala anhu. He heard the verse that ends this juz, You will not attain righteousness until you spend from that which you love. Okay, so that's one. He was able to overlook. He thought about, what do I love most? He said, I love the best gardens in Medina, which are now encompassed in Masjid Nabawi, right? So the most beautiful gardens in Medina, uh, all of those hundreds of trees, he says, that's what I love most as soon as he heard that verse. The second also, thing he can, did, no? yeah, yeah, absolutely. If I can add one thing, yeah, also like the story of uh, Mustah ibn Uthatha, when Abu Bakr radiallahu an, was uh, giving him a lot of charity and money because he's a relative to Abu Bakr. He's from uh, his, he's a, mater, a maternal uh, uh, relative. So uh, when the incident of accusing uh, Aisha, the daughter of Abu Bakr of uh, the, the uh, adultery was there and it hurts Abu Bakr uh, like the father of Aisha radiallahu anha. Mustah was reportedly involved in, acu in this accusation. So it hurts him the most that he was given Mustah a lot of money and he supported Mustah throughout his life. And now Mustah did this to him. So he, he swore that he would never give Mustah uh, money after that. And then guess what? The Quran, uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, 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 says in, in the verse, uh, directing to Abu Bakr and so and, and to, to all Muslims until the, the, the day of judgment. Uh, uh, and do not let those who have wealth uh, to not give their relatives to because of what happened or because of what they did. 
I mean, the idea here is not, not you give because they did something good to you or they did, uh, and you stop because they did something bad, but you, you do it because it's, it's a command from Allah. It's for yourself uh, to be righteous. Jazakallah khair. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless you. SubhanAllah. So uh, you mentioned in this situation, if Abu Bakr radiallahu ta'ala anhu who was freeing all of these slaves that brought him no benefit whatsoever, and people thought, why don't you free others instead of bidabs of the world and khababs of the world, right? And Allah Azza mentioned his purity and his giving, and now he's being tested with the sadaq in another way, that his relative who he was giving insulted his daughter, subhanAllah, and that purified his intention. So bringing it all back, uh, it's, it's, it's amazing. Abu Talha radiallahu ta'ala anhu, as I mentioned, uh, saw past the dunya, as Allah Azza wa mentions, zinat al hayat al dunya, right? The beauty of this world, the allure of this world. Then he went to the Prophet وسلم, and he spent it seeking what, right? The, the day in which there is no doubt, seeking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's reward. And, and it's very important here that he gave it to the Prophet وسلم, without any man or other, without any boasting or any, like it wasn't like, Ya Rasulullah, these beautiful gardens, they're all for you. He said, Ya Rasulullah, it's all yours. He didn't remind, he didnn't tell the Prophet وسلم, fine, I know you've had your eye on this and this will do great things for the deen. And, no, it was, Ya Rasulullah, take it. Uh, why? Because then I wanted to give the thing that was most precious to me, seeking Allah's pleasure. And it was the Prophet that said to him, You know, you should spend it on your family first. You should, you know, the Prophet was trying to find a way for him to not give everything away at that moment, in that moment of heightened spirituality and faith. But that is the case of the believers that long for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. رَبَّنَا لَا تُزِغْ قُلُوبَنَا بَعْدَ إِذْ هَدَيْتَنَا وَهَبْ لَنَا مِنْ لَدُنْكَ رَحْمَةً إِنَّكَ أَنْتَ الْوَهَابُ رَبَّنَا إِنَّكَ جَامِعُ النَّاسِ فِي يَوْمٍ لَا رَيْبَ فِيهِ إِنَّ اللَّهَ لَا يُخْلِفُ الْمِعَادِ جزاكم الله خير دكتور عبد الله وشيخ عبد الله دوره as well شيخ عبد الله you want to say one last thing and show us send us home as we wrap up yeah whenever I hear that verse لَنْ تَنَا لَبِرَ حَتَّى تُفْكُمْ مِمَّا تَفْكُونَ it reminds me when I was in my first year my first year in learning Arabic in Medina and it's real short it's ended off on a funny note. And we're learning that the, the word money means mal, right? And the verb mal means to lean towards something. So he said, if any of you have a pocket right here, you see your pocket, that's where you put your money. It's right next to your heart. Because <laughs> your heart leans towards, so it just reminds you. So every time you put something in there, remember, I don't, I don't want my heart to be that close to the money. Shall it be in my hand, the dunya in my hand, shall so on that note, inshallah, today we'll go ahead and wrap up. Zakallah khair, Sheikh Dr. Abdullah al Uda for joining us tonight. We hope to see you again joining us on one of these nights. Zakallah khair, Sheikh Abdullah al as always. And inshallah, ta'ala for the rescue, we will see you tomorrow night at the same time, inshallah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.